Hey guys, it's uh, Dr. Andrea Spino from FunctionalAnatomySeminars.com and FunctionalAnatomyBlog.com. Um, I just want to talk a little bit today about uh, grip strength training. Um, funny thing about grip strength training is people claim to, to talk about functionality and they're going to train function. Um, when they select their exercise, they want to select the most functional exercises. But <clears throat> for most people, even though function is, is linked to utilization, uh, most people don't focus on grip strength when they're in their training programs, which is, which is bizarre because most everything that you do uh, in the gym or um, during athletic events is going to utilize grip strength or is going to benefit from having an increased grip strength. Um, now, the one thing with grip strength is that most people, when they use devices for grip strength, they always um, uh, either squeeze or extend their fingers with their wrist at neutral. Um, what the wrist at neutral means is that the forearms, the forearm extensors and the forearm flexors are in a mid-range position. And as we know, most people, if you look at their uh, length tension curves or their length strength curves, most people function very, very well in the neutral ranges, but they function very, very poorly um, when muscles are activated long or when muscles are activated short. Um, so what I like to do with my grip strength, I just got this a uh, little device as a gift from uh, Dr. Alan Testa at this past weekend's uh, Functional Range Release Seminar. Uh, Dr. Testa, coming out of Florida, came to Toronto to get certified in FR Release. So he kind of gave me this. This thing used to be stuck in the middle, so you can kind of do a finger extension as well as, uh, as compressive strength. I took it out just because uh, the resistance wasn't high enough, so I tied a knot in it so it's a little bit higher. But anyway... The one thing that you can do when you have these types of grip strength things, when you're working on your grip strength, instead of only working at the neutral range, what you want to do is you want to work the muscle long and you want to work the muscle short. And those are going to um, really expand the functionality of how your, your body is able to utilize the strength uh, of the grip as well as your wrist strength. So when you take the, the ball, what you can do is you can start if I'm working the forearm flexors here, you can start in a lengthened position, you can grip the ball as hard as you can, and then you can start flexing the forearm and extending the forearm as you maintain the grip. You'll notice that as you come very, very short, it's going to be a lot harder uh, to maintain that grip. And when you would start doing something like this, you would be shaking uh, just because people are not really used to activating things in a shortened position. Similarly, if you take this little extension mechanism, What you can do is you can start either at a shortened or lengthened position, go ahead and extend it out and then work on uh, shortening the extensor group and lengthening the extensor group as you are maintaining the tension uh, by extending the fingers out. This is also good in, for training purposes, especially the flexion one. If you're working on a lot of false grip training, if you're doing a lot of ring training, a lot of people complain that their wrists hurt or that their uh, their hands hurt after doing a lot of muscle ups for example so this really gets the body used to activating those forearm flexors in a shortened position and thereby by expanding the uh, availability in function for that uh, particular articulation you're increasing that joints mobility or in other words you're increasing that joints ability to control itself over a greater range of motion